The majority of Eurorack oscillators are monophonic, meaning that they can only play one note at a time. There are some exceptions to this, like the oxychoral, which has a MIDI input and is uh, polyphonic, meaning it can play many notes at the same time. And there are modules that kind of get around monophony by uh, using tricks, like the chord mode in plates allows you to uh, play a full chord by just giving a root note for the chord and uh, another control for inversion and another f uh, control for chord type, but you can't really control each individual node. However, if you have enough oscillators, you could create your own chords by stacking the oscillators and giving different pitches to the different oscillators to form those chords. So that's what I wanna do in this video. Let's talk a little bit about the patch that I have here. Um, I've got uh, four oscillators that are running through data so that we can see what pitch that they're tuned to and what pitch they're playing. And they're going into the quad VCA uh, where I'm gonna be able to controlling their volume, then into my mixer and out. The four oscillators that I'm using are Castor and Pollux in data's channel one, Manus Ateritas Aaliyah in data's channel two, Plates in the classic waveforms model on channel three, and beads operating in wavetable mode in channel four. Let me bring each of those in so you can hear what they sound like. Here's Castor and Pollux. You can see here that it's playing a C2 note. We switch out to channel two. There's Manus Ateritasalia playing a C3. Channel three is plates playing a C4, and on channel four, we have beads, also playing a C4. And when you bring them all together, you hear it just a bunch of Cs. So it has a nice wide, thick sound, but it's not a chord. A chord is defined as three or more different notes that are playing in unison at the same time. So uh, we've got four voices here, so we can uh, form a chord that's either three or four different notes. Let's build a simple progression in the key of C, because we're tuned to C. We're gonna play C, A, F, and then the G7 chord. So this would be referred to in music theory as the one, six, four, five, seven chord progression. If you don't have a music theory background, that's okay. I'll try to explain what I'm doing as we go. Uh, so for sequencing, what I'm going to be using is the Mimetic Digitalis, which is this guy in the bottom left corner here. What this has is uh, 16 steps, it's a 16 step sequencer, where you can send a specific voltage for each step, and then there's four channels, so you can do that four times simultaneously. So for each step, there's four different signals. Those signals are going out of these green cables here. I'm sending them in to the Bard Quartet by Shackmat. This is a quantizer, so what this will do is it'll take the CV signals coming from the mimetic digitalis, and it'll snap those values coming in so that they match a specific scale that I can program in here on this little keyboard. Conveniently, the Bard Quartet also has four channels. You can see one, two, three, four, those buttons right there, and we can switch between them. You can have all four of them set to different scales, but in this case, I've set them all to C major. So you can see that all of this thing, these little buttons here kind of simulate a piano keyboard. So C, D, E, F, G, A, B. And I have all four of these channels set to the same scale. So that means that any voltage that I send out of Mimetic Digitalis, Bard Quartet is gonna make sure that those go into the four oscillators as one of the notes of the C major scale, which is essentially all the white keys on the piano. So I said that we're gonna do a one, six, four, five, seven progression. And what that means is that we're gonna build four different chords and we're gonna build them on the C, which is the root of the scale. Uh, in music theory terms, this is referred to as the one chord, one meaning the first degree of the scale that uh, the root note is built on. And then we're gonna have an A, which is the sixth degree, if you count up from the bottom, one, two, three, four, five, six. So that's a, that's a six chord. And in the uh, diatonic C major scale, that's actually a minor chord. Then we're going to go down to the F, which is the fourth degree of the scale. And then finally, we're going to have a 5-7 chord, which is built on this G. 
uh, the fifth degree of the scale. The seven part means that it's actually going to be four different notes. Those first three chords are a combination of three notes. Uh, and so we're going to have one of the notes doubled because we have four different oscillators playing at the same time. But that last chord, the 5-7, is actually four different notes. So each uh, oscillator is going to be playing a completely different pitch. So let's get started and uh, program in the first chord. So let me bring in the uh, lowest note. And I'm going to make sure I have the first channel selected on Mimetic Digitalis. And I think this is actually correct. Uh, let me go to make sure we're looking at the right one. Yeah, so it's already, it's already on C2, which is what we want. We want this playing the root note of the chord. And then for the second voice, we want this to be playing an E. I'm gonna bring it up to an E3. Ah, and make sure I'm on the right channel here. I've gone far too high. Okay, there's an E. The third oscillator, we want to play a G for. And the fourth oscillator, we want to play a C5. And once again, I've forgotten to change so that we're looking at the right thing. Okay, now let's listen to them all together. That is a C major chord. C, E, G, and then another C on top. If you didn't follow what I just did there, let me quickly walk you through it. Remember that the data screen is showing us uh, what each of the four oscillators is playing pitch-wise. The letter is like the name of the note, and the number after the letter is what octave you're playing. Uh, so if you think about a piano keyboard, you have the same notes repeated many times. And the higher the, num the number, uh, the higher up the piano keyboard, or the farther to the right it is to play a higher pitch. The way chords are built is by uh, layering notes on top of each other, sort of every other letter name of the scale. So if you're building a chord on C, you have the root note on C, and then you skip a note and you have E, skip a note and have G, and then we double up with the root note again on the top to get a stronger sense of that root note so that you really hear the C. And then when you listen to them together, you get that chord. Uh, the way I was programming this is by selecting the channel that I want to tune with these buttons here that turn on and off the, each of the channels. And then this knob, I can just turn right and left to increase or decrease the voltage uh, that is being sent out for the particular step on that channel. And the quantizer will make sure that uh, the voltage that's coming out stays as one of those pitches. So what I'm doing is I'm just turning the knob and watching the pitch that's being displayed here until it goes to the one that I want it to be. Okay, so uh, I realize I actually started on the third step here, but it won't matter because we're just going to do four steps. So when I press this X button, uh, it advances to the next step of the same row, and it'll just loop around back to the beginning of the row when you start over. Um, so I will go to the fourth step, which is really our second step. Apologies for that, but it doesn't really matter. We'll just consider the third step our, the first one in our chord sequence. For this uh, fourth step, this is our second chord, which is the A. And so the, the letter notes in the A chord are A, C, E. Uh, so we're gonna stack those up again. Um, we could do the same thing that we did with the first chord where we're kind of uh, from lowest to highest playing the pitches in the order that they appear in the scale, you know, one, three, five, and then another one above. But it's a good habit of voice leading. It's a good practice. Uh, to try to have it so that when a chord changes, each note uh, in the voicing uh, moves as little as possible. So uh, what that means is as long as you have the correct notes in the scale, the lowest note in the, in the chord does not have to be the root, and the second chord in the in the scale, the like second pitch in the chord does not have to be the third or you know the 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 next note up in the chord. You can have them in any order as long as you have the right pitches. And so uh, if you move the, if you try to make it so that 
there's as little movement as possible in terms of like how much, how far up or how far down an individual oscillator goes when it changes from one chord to another, you tend to get a nicer sound that uh, sounds kind of more natural and not so kind of programmed and robotic. So for this second chord, for the A chord, uh, we're going to start with, uh, again, the root note for the lowest uh, oscillator. So let's gonna, we're going to move this up to an A. For our second oscillator, we're going to turn this up to an E, which is the fifth degree of the chord, A, C, E. And then the third oscillator, we're going to go up to A. So this is a doubling of the root note of the chord. See so if I turn on the first oscillator. Oscillators one and three are playing the same pitch. And then for our fourth oscillator, we're gonna tune this to C5. Okay, and let's listen to them all together. That's the A minor chord in the key of C major. So let's listen to the two chords side by side so you can start to hear the beginnings of the sequence. If I go back to this chord, C major, A minor. Okay, let's hit X to advance to the third chord in our sequence. This is going to be the four chord, which is built on F in, in the C major scale. Uh, so let's again switch to our first channel and select that on the mimetic digitalis as well. Let's bring in the pitch and we're going to set this to uh, an F. So let's put it up to F2. Good. Our second oscillator will be a doubling of that. So let's move this up to an F3. Let's move this up to an A, which is the third of the chord. Good. Switch over to the fourth oscillator. And let's make this a C, which is the third of the chord. Oh, sorry, the fifth of the chord. So there's FAC with a second oscillator playing F, which is the four chord, F major, in the key of C. Okay, let's go back to our original chord and let's listen to the sequence we have so far. C major, A minor, F major. Okay, very good. One more to go and we've got our progression. So let's hit the X button to advance to the last step on mimetic digitalis. Switch back to our root chord and our final chord is the seventh chord that I talked about. This is the G7 chord. So it's built on the fifth degree of the scale the fifth note up from the root, and it has uh, the one, the three, the five, and the seven as its pitches. So the root is gonna be playing G, it should be G2. So let's activate channel one, move this up to G2. On channel two, we're gonna play a D3, which is the fifth, degree of the 5-7 chord. On the third oscillator, we're going to play an F4, which is the seventh degree of the G chord. And then on the fourth channel, oops, 
Oops. Fourth channel, we're going to play a B, which is the third. All right, let's listen to the full chord. That's the five seven chord in the C major scale. So G, B, D, F, four different notes. And now we've got our full chord progression. So let's uh, turn on my sequence. So this will now, I've got Pamela's Pro Workout running with a a clock and every time this jack sends a trigger we'll automatically advance to the next step by advancing the x uh, row function on mimetic digitalis so let me bring in the oscillators and i will turn this back on so it starts listening to that trigger There we go. We've got a chord sequence, which kind of sounds like a single instrument, but it's actually composed of four different oscillators stacked on each other, each playing a different note in the chord. Just for good measure, let's try inserting an envelope into the quad VCA so that we get a little bit of attack and decay rather than just constantly playing notes. Sounds pretty good. It's a simple progression, but it gets the point across. If you didn't follow all of the music theory details of this, don't worry about that. The real takeaway here is just the idea that you can build a polyphonic voice by combining mo mo monophonic voices if you have enough oscillators. And you can create chords by having each one play a different pitch of each chord and having them advance together. You don't need exactly the same modules that I did here, that I used here. You can use any sequencer or any quantizer. Technically, you could do this without a quantizer if you were very precise in your voltage settings. It just makes it a little bit easier because you don't have to worry so much about the exact tuning of each pitch. But I hope that technique is helpful. Thanks for watching.